Hello, welcome to Revelations with Delusional Knitter. I'm Angela, your host. This is episode 130, and it is Saturday, January 23rd, 2016. On to updates and housekeeping. Welcome if you are new. If you are returning, I thank you as always and hope either way that you enjoy the show and continue to watch the podcast. The podcast is available on iTunes, YouTube, DelusionalNitter.com, and I also post a link um, embedded into the Ravelry board for that particular that thread for that particular episode. Declaration. So what's been going on? Oh, I didn't even bring it in here. Not that it matters. I was in serious need of a new cell phone. The battery wasn't um, lasting at all anymore. It was just super, super slow and sluggish and whatever, but I hate paying for them. And I don't really care about having a contract because I've had Verizon for I don't even know how long anymore, to be honest with you. Probably since I was like 16 years old or whenever I got my first cell phone or whatever, so a long time. Um, so I don't really care about that because I'm not going to cancel the service or anything like that. I've always had them and I have no problem with them. It's a little expensive, but it's fine. And um, now, I guess, back then, it used to be if you signed up for a contract, you'd get the phone for free. Now, I guess they don't really do that anymore, and you have to purchase the phones. So, I did find, though, I wanted to try an iPhone, and I like it a lot. <clears throat> Instead of the 6, if I got the 5S, um, then it was free. It was like 99 cents. But they also charge you an upgrade fee, which apparently everybody does now. Ridiculous. So even if you get a free phone, you're still going to have to pay something, right? So whatever. So I upgraded our phones recently, and that's good. So my husband just has it for emergencies, so he has an old flip phone. But his old flip phone was old, number one. And number two, I think the screen got smashed at some point or something, so it was in pretty rough shape. So I got him a new one also, but I'm liking my phone a lot. The battery lasts, like, days now, and... You know, it works really fast and it's really quick and if I have to look something up, like literally my phone, it was getting so bad that I would like, if I needed to look something up, I could like click on it and then put the phone down and like go to the bathroom, <laughs> come back and, nope, still didn't load. <laughs> it was pretty bad. So I'm very happy with my new phone. Um, it was a little sad, but a little nice. My stepmom's mom passed away last week, and I went to the funeral because it was like an hour away, but they were in Massachusetts. But my stepmom and dad and my sisters moved down to Florida several years ago. So I got to see my stepmom, who I haven't seen in a while. I saw my sisters last year when they were up for different reasons. One was up for a wedding, one came up to see some of her friends. So I had seen them recently, but um, I haven't seen my stepmom since they moved, which was quite a long time ago. So although it was a sad occasion to see her, I was happy to see her. And um, her mom was older and had failing health and stuff, so people weren't... Not that people weren't upset, I think you understand what I mean. People weren't, you know, it wasn't a sudden drastic thing. So um, after the funeral, we went back to her sister's house and hung out and had food. So we kind of had a nice little visit, even though it was a sad occasion. But um, what else have I been doing? I've been a little busy this past week. I had to go to the dentist for cleaning, which took forever. She was late, and then which I don't care because I've been there before with an emergency problem, so they've been late for the next person. So that's perfectly fine. I'm not upset about that. But then she did the cleaning. And then they wanted to do an exam because I hadn't been in a while and I have a lot of problems. I have a lot of crowns, I have a lot of, like, if you've watched recently, I broke my front tooth not that long ago and had that fixed. But, um, it was like an hour and a half and when I got out of there, I wasn't terribly upset, but I was like, jeez, you know? That's why I never go to the dentist. Oh my god, why did that take so long? This, that, and the other. Now, meanwhile, while I was there, she said, oh, I'm gonna, I want to try this other tool to get some of the staining off your teeth. I drink a lot of coffee and I smoke. So my bottom teeth were kind of nasty. And um, I was like, yeah, sure, fine, do whatever you want. So she's doing it. And then she was like, well, I got most of them off, but there's still some staining. So I was not too happy when I left there. It was fine, but I was just a little frazzled because I thought I had more time. I had to go home, get my lunch, and run back to work, which was like down the street from the dentist. And, ooh, you know, kind of freaking out. I come home. I ran into the bathroom to use the bathroom. And then I went into the mirror to look at my teeth. And I was like, oh! 
Oh my god! They look like completely different. I was like, what is she talking about? She only got some of the stains off. They look awesome! So I was like, it was just funny because I was like, oh my god, I didn't even know they could do that. So that was really cool. She probably quit smoking now, right? Mm, yeah. Mm. Um, then, actually the day before that at work, we had to recertify for CPR. So I had to go at 10 till 2 and then go to work at 2. And that was just, so yeah, those two days, I was just like a little frazzled because I get really, not really upset if my schedule is messed up. But if I don't get to do like my morning routine, sit here and have my coffee and knit and chill, I get kind of frazzled <laughs> when I'm rushing around. So the dentist was actually after the CPR day. So I was even more so like, ah, I gotta go, I gotta go, let me get my lunch. That kind of freaks me out when I don't have time. But it was fine, and I'm glad I went, because now my teeth feel much better and cleaner, and she got a bunch of those stains off, which I couldn't even believe. It's amazing what they can do nowadays with dental stuff. Now today is Saturday. We went to the farmer's market with our friends that we do every year. It's closer to them. It's about an hour drive for us, but um, it's at this really cool greenhouse, and they have lots of cool stuff. They do have some fiber days, which we went to today. Although I did not buy anything. I did not buy any yarn, I did not buy any fiber, because I have enough in my stash. But also, um, I went because I brought my new shawl that I just finished the design for, for her to get pictures, because she's like a professional photographer. So, got some awesome pictures, she's going to be sending those to me soon. Um, and I got some goodies. I don't know that they sell online, because I couldn't find it before, but there's a place that has a tea that I really like. I got two packages this time and um, they also have like a lot of herbs and stuff so they also had a lavender honey and a mint honey so I grabbed one each of those as well it's a farmers market so they're little things you know like three or four dollars for a little jar so it's not that big of a deal so I got some tea and those honeys and they also had like a spice mix of like rosemary thyme basil and lavender oh, be so good for like chicken or pork so I'm excited about that and then there's another um, a sugar house that goes there as well that has really good jams. They have a strawberry rhubarb, which I need to get there earlier or have our friends get it for me first because they get there earlier because it's always sold out. And it was again. So um, I did get um, crab apple jelly and we got blueberry maple jam, which is really good. But no strawberry rhubarb. That's my favorite. And I only have like this much left in the jar from last year, so love to see. I think they may sell online though, so I might be able to get some more if I want some. Uh, and that's all that's been going on. So I've been a little busy, had some things to do, had some traveling and things like that, but uh, in work, but that's been about all that's been going on. So on to revelations. I do not have any FOs, but I do have what I've been working on. So the making Christmas socks are still the same. I actually haven't touched them at all. I am working on a mystery knit along that I showed the yarn for in the last episode. So if you are participating in the bow ties are cool knit along and you don't want any spoilers, I am partially through clue three, which came out a few days ago on Thursday. So if you don't want a spoiler, um, look away for a little bit. But this is this. It was in the spun right round yarn that I showed before. It's a triangular shawl and I'm liking it a lot. It's a lot of fun to do. I'm loving these colors together and it's coming out really well. So what it is is these are for the doctors and there's a gap when the show wasn't on anymore and these are the new doctors so for example you can see that thicker line represents David Tennant so if you had a favorite doctor you would do that line um, double and then we have the bow ties and then we're moving on from there so it's a lot of fun it's a good it's a great pattern it's really easy it's you know, fun to do, and I'm really loving my color choices on this yarn. That's really cool. So that's that one. And then another knit along I'm participating in, which is not a mystery, it's Peacock Tail by, um, what's her name? I pulled up the pattern actually. Nim Teasley, or Teasdale. I should probably not open my mouth before I figure out what I'm talking about. Um, where is it? Here it is. Uh, Nim Teasdale. Yeah, see, I was wrong. And it's a lovely lace shawl. That's her sample shawl, and it's beaded, so I'm working on that. I don't have a gradient, and I didn't want to buy more yarn, but I found a lovely peacock color 
uh, in my stash, and this is, um, there's the tag right there, Barocco Ultra Alpaca Fine. So it's a fingering weight, but it's a very, very light fingering. It's very light fingering. So yeah, it's that lovely peacock color. And then I had some wonderful beads that would be perfect for it in my stash from Bead Wrangler. Those nice light teal beads. It's from Bead Wrangler. And I'm knitting away on this. And I've actually knit this portion like four times already, and I'll tell you why. <laughs> I had these beads that I thought were great, and I was looking at them, and I'm like, hmm, they kind of stick out a lot. Maybe I want something more muted. Right? So I ripped this all out. I wasn't this far, actually. I think I was only on the first repeat. I ripped it all out, and I knit it again with darker beads that I had in my stash. And I thought about it, and I was like, you know what? I really did like the really light beads. They really popped, and they were coordinating. So then I went back, I ripped it out again, <laughs> and I did it again with the light beads. But I do like it, and I'm going to leave the light beads, and we're going to continue on. So it's a lot of fun. The only thing I am finding that's a little difficult um, between the two, going between the two shawls, is this one has a double increase on one side and then a single increase on the back side where that one's a normal triangular shawl where you just do a single increase on the edges in the center um, and then you just do plain on the back side. Sometimes I find myself doing the other one on the other one and I'm like, no, that's not right. <laughs> I have to go back. But that one's going as well. And next up, I have some, um, Lisa over at 90% Knitting is doing a hand spun along, sorry, I was checking my wraps per inch, this is hand spun, this is my hand spun, I was checking it on the other end as well. So this is a gradient, this was a loop bump that I spun up, this is the remainder of it, this is the rest of the color progression. I forget why I had this in two, I don't know if it snapped because I was Navajo applying it. I don't know if it broke. I really don't remember why this is separate. But um, that's that. And what I was going to do for that is the, I don't know how to pronounce this, Moab shawl. It's M-O-A-B. Because it was specifically designed for hand spun, which may have different gauges and yardages. So it's kind of one of those... I don't even know what they're called, but the shawl where you can stop at any point or stop at a certain point um, and not run out of yarn if you have a yardage issue. So that's that shawl, and that's what I'm going to knit that up in. Because that one kind of, it's kind of a fingering, but it's it's pretty thick. Like towards the end, I want to say it's almost worsted, but with my reps per inch, it's really not. It's more like a sport, but it looks like worsted, so <laughs> we'll see how that goes. But, um... I might even have to start it on a smaller needle and then graduate up to a larger needle towards the end to keep the gauge consistent, but it is a shawl, so it's not a huge deal. It'll be fine. And on that note, just to let you know, if you've watched the podcast before, I'm sure you already know this, but I love knitting shawls. I never wear them. There's a couple I have worn before. Hitchhiker. Um, I used to wear the... Actually, it's not that I don't ever wear them period. I used to wear them when I worked in manufacturing and I was a supervisor or the engineer's assistant because I would be dressed in business casual and then those were appropriate. Now that I work for the police department and I wear a uniform, what am I going to do with a shawl? Number one. Number two, if I'm not at work wearing a uniform, you're looking at my wardrobe right now. So. <laughs> Although, to be honest with you, I would wear my bow ties are cool, Dr. Who shawl, with this hoodie. I would totally do that. That would be fine. <laughs> That's just funny, because I love knitting them. Rarely wear them. I need to find people to gift them to, I guess. I don't know. Um, that's it for Revelations. We'll skip over the whips because I haven't touched anything else. String Theory, I have nothing, but that's not entirely true. If you remember on the last episode, I showed you that Godric's Hollow from Into the World. I don't know if I mentioned it on that episode, but I wanted to do it as a gradient. I wanted to break up the colors and do a gradient yarn. Yesterday, I split up all the colors in the fiber, and I started spinning it. Yay! So, I'm aiming for fingering. So I'm spinning it pretty thin because then I'm going to Navajo apply it to maintain the gradient. 
and so that's going to be a while before you see that one finished. Um, but I did break up the yarn. I don't have it all to show you because it's kind of lying over here in the chair, but um, like here's all the yellows that I split up. It didn't fit back in the bag. By the way, when you pull fiber out, it does not fit back in the bag. Um, this was the gray, so I have a bunch of these. Then this one was kind of what I was going to use as the transition from the gray to the yellow. Um, the way the fiber was dyed, all of this stuff kind of just kept going. Like it would be like this, and then like that, and then like the, the yellow yellow, so I really had to break them up a lot. But um, that's what I'm going to try and do and see if that works out as a gradient. And that's it for spinning. Sorry about that. I should have pulled that over earlier. But yeah, it's all draped over the chair over there to, so that it doesn't get all squashed. Um, scrolls. I'm not going to do a book review for this episode. I have two more books from Cooperative Process Review, but I will save those for future episodes because we left the house today for the farmer's market around 10. And we just got home a little while ago at 6, I think, and now it's 7.30. So, um, yeah, I'm not doing a book review today. <laughs> Testaments, I have none. I did not buy, like I said, any yarn or fiber at the farmer's market. I probably would have, and it's fine that I didn't, because I bought all those tea and jams and all that stuff, so that's fine. And that's really what I wanted to go there for. Um, it's so busy there. It's nuts. And we got the photos of the new shawl, and by the time we were done with that, it had already been like an hour, and I got my tea and jam and stuff, and then our friend, um, he was like, okay, did you guys get what you want? Because we really need to get out of here. And I looked at him and I'm like, yeah, I get that. Because I don't like crowds either and I don't like... And they had already been there for a little while waiting for us. So I was like, yeah, we're good. And plus I was starving and we were going to lunch after that. So I was like, yeah, let's go. So I didn't even get any fiber. Which, like I said, is fine because I don't need any. But um, And primarily my main goal for today was to get photos of the shawl, which we did. So that's good. And that leads us into intentions. So you can see the shawl now because I'm done knitting it. And it came out awesome. So this is Mirabelle. And it's a three color shawl. And this is the lovely. And so this yarn is from Morning Bright Yarns. And Becky right now is working on kits. So I do believe this colorway will definitely be available. But she's also going to come up with a couple of other ones. And what this is, it's a short row shawl, as you can see. Well, maybe. I don't know. So you, it's all worked in short rows, and there's a little bit of some eyelet lace. And then there's a Pico bind off. And I'm really, really happy with how the design came out. And I love, love the shawl. So that is Mirabelle. And I'm also super happy we found like the perfect background to take photos of this shawl. Um, I can't wait to get the photos. And that will be, there's going to be a knit along that will start February 15th because I still have a few things to do to finalize the pattern and the photos I need to get and um, the pattern's all set and the document's all set but I need to create the Ravelry page, put the photos up and all that stuff. So I need a couple of days for that. So I'm going to start putting the word out there February 1st and then that will give people time to order yarn if they want to get a kit from Becky at Morning Bright Yarns. So I'm so excited that that is done. And on to Harrisay. We have a giveaway for a cast iron cast on that I reviewed on the last episode from Cooperative Press. So let's do that. I have random.org. There were 25 entries, so 2 through 25. And came up with number 3. And let's see who number three is. Three is going to be Packers in Maine. And you've won before. You're very, that's Michelle. And obviously from Maine. And um, she's been lucky on this show. It's all random though. I use the random number generator. So, and, but I'm pretty sure she's won something before. Um, so congratulations to you. You've won something else. It's funny when it's random and uh, I see the same names pop up all the time. Um, Hogwarts at Ravelry. There's a new rotation starting... I forget when. Monday maybe? I don't remember. I did sign up. 
Um, we have the Epic Knit Along on my board. There's been a couple of entries. Very exciting and lots of chatter. I'm excited about that, so you can go check that one out. Ravelry patterns. I do have some Ravelry patterns for you today. First one I have is the, I don't even know how to pronounce this, Siphon Blassen Lice Scarf by Sybil R. It's a free pattern. It's a sideways, I don't want to call this a shawlette. I don't know that I'd really call it a scarf. But this would be another great one for hand spun or gradient. And then we have Helen Socks by Very Busy Monkey. And it's 90 cents. So definitely worth the price. It's a lovely lace sock pattern. And then we have Valentino Chalette by Ray Blackledge. It takes lace. It is, what is it? It is, um, you know what? I don't even know if that one's available. I don't know, to be honest with you, because there's no link to purchase it. So I don't know if it's available, but I saw it and I thought it was pretty. And then we have the Mitered Hanging Towel, so it's like a dish towel, by Christina Bernardi Schiffman. And it is free. I thought this one was really cool looking. So that's that one. And those are your Ravelry patterns for today. What else do we have here? Bullet journal is the same. I haven't done anything more interesting in bullet journal except practice on my lettering to make the bullet journal look a little prettier. Um, delusional Jabber, arts and crafts. I have not done any other crafting. I am happy though that I've done some spinning. Reading, I'm still on Flip and Ender's Game and TV. What was I watching recently? Did I ever tell you about F is for Family? It's a Netflix original. It's a cartoon, an adult cartoon, because they swear on it. <laughs> Use the F word. Please don't have your children watch it. Um, Bill Burr, the comedian, uh, is in it. I think he even like came up with the concept of it, too. So it's based on the 70s. It's supposed to take place in the 70s. There's mom and dad, and three kids, and it's just kind of their life and stuff, and dad's work, and they're, you know, 30-minute episodes, but it's very, very funny. It really cracks me up. Um, I think that might be it for this episode. I can't think of anything else. So the shawl was the main, um, Hurrah! For recently, I blocked it, so I'm really excited about that and got photos. That's important. And I think that might be it for this episode, because I don't think I have anything else to tell you about. I've been working, and that's about it. Unfortunately, I do not have a fabulous title or story for this episode. <laughs> it's just been the normal, regular stuff at work. Um, although I was laughing with my husband. His uncle... It's one of those that says, you know, Jesus, Mary, and Joseph, when he gets upset. I had an older gentleman on the phone calling in about his granddaughter, and he kept saying, Jesus, Jesus, Mary, and Joseph, what is going on in here? And I was just, I was trying so hard not to laugh. <laughs> and I was telling my husband about it, and he's like, did you, Uncle Jimmy? Like, <laughs> it's just funny. But, oh, it's just, I don't know why that just cracked it. Oh, it just cracks us up when he does it. But, um, yeah, when that guy was doing that on 911 on the phone, I was trying so hard, I was like, I, like, I had to pull the phone away from my head, and I was like, oh, God. <laughs> you know. Uh, I will probably not title the episode Jesus, Mary, Joseph, but it was funny. And, um, that's about it. We haven't gotten any more snow here, but it's been frigid. Really frigid. Actually, when we left our friend's house, which, like I said, is like an hour away, it was snowing like crazy and really windy. So they actually, like, kicked us out, which was fine. But they were like, um, we were hanging out at their house doing some stuff after we went to lunch. And they were like, you guys really should go home now because it's like a blizzard out there. And we looked outside and we are like, oh, jeez. Because at first it wasn't supposed to snow. Then it was supposed to be flurries. Then it was supposed to be a foot. Then it was supposed to be nothing. So we didn't know. So we just went out there anyway. And it wasn't snowing for a while. And then we were sitting having coffee. And, yeah, it started snowing like crazy. So we left there and it was only snowing for about, like, 20 minutes or half an hour from the ride, and here we got nothing, which is fabulous, because I don't want any of it, but 
that's it. So I hope you're staying warm if you're in the colder climates and knitting and spinning and having a great time. And happy knitting and spinning.